Hello everyone, my name is Holly and I work for WWF Scotland. You will hopefully have heard of WWF, you might recognise our logo. This little panda is very famous and has been our logo for 60 years. At WWF we work to look after our planet and to create a world where people and nature can thrive together. I am a climate and energy policy manager. It's my job to help persuade our government to act to protect our world and to make it a better place for us and for wildlife. You'll maybe recognise this place. This is the debating chamber in the Scottish Parliament at Holyrood in Edinburgh. This is where the laws are made that affect the way we live. Working for the policy team means that we try to influence what the government is doing about climate change. At WWF, we care about our planet and about its climate. I have a particular interest in how our energy use affects our climate. And today I'm going to talk to you about how the choices we make to look after our climate will have real effects on how you live your lives in the future. So let's start with now. This is a typical day in a typical Scottish city. I want to use my time with you to look at the environmental impacts of our everyday lives paying particular attention to the things that you do that generate greenhouse gases. Before I continue, shall we just recap on the basics? You'll have probably learnt all this stuff in your science class, but it's useful to remember why we are concerned about our climate. The Earth's average surface temperature is increasing, and we know that this is because of human activities. Burning fossil fuels like coal and oil and gas release greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, and this has a warming effect. This warming effect happens because the gases in the atmosphere act like a greenhouse and trap heat. This diagram shows how these gases, like carbon dioxide, act like an atmospheric blanket, stopping heat from escaping out into space. This has a huge knock-on effect for our weather systems. People talk about global warming, but actually some places will get hotter and drier and some places will be wetter and we will have more frequent storms that are more intense. Climate change will affect our food systems, our wildlife and the way we live. WWF and the Glasgow Science Centre have lots of information on global warming and climate change if you want to learn more. So let's get back to looking at our everyday lives. No matter where you live in Scotland, in a city or in a village or in a rural location, you will probably need to travel around a bit for school, to visit friends and family or to go to the shops. Some people have to travel a bit further on their holidays or perhaps for work. When we travel, if we use a vehicle that runs on petrol or diesel, when this fuel is burned in a combustion engine like this, it releases greenhouse gases and other harmful emissions from its exhaust. This smoky substance contains carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, and other noxious gases. Now, we've already established that greenhouse gases are not good for climate, and transport is responsible for a lot of Scotland's emissions. A whopping 36% of all greenhouse gases come from transport, and cars account for a big chunk of that. So what can we do about it? And what does your future travel look like? Well, there are three main things we will have to do to minimize our climate impact from travel. And the first thing is to reduce our use of transport. So that means walking more and cycling more. Most of our journeys by car are actually less than three miles. So in the future, there will be better footpaths and cycle paths to make it easier to avoid taking the car. The next thing we can do is to make our travel more efficient. This means making more sustainable travel choices. Take the bus, not the car. Take the train where you can. Using public transport, your journey's emissions are divided up by all the people on the bus or the train. So rather than one person sitting in a car and driving from Edinburgh to Glasgow, you have hundreds of people sharing the journey. The next thing we can do is to make our transport less polluting. That means changing the types of fuel that we use. You'll have all seen electric cars buzzing around. They're becoming more popular. In the next 10 years, diesel and petrol cars and vans will be phased out and electric charging points will spring up all over our towns and cities and villages. 
or public transport will be different too, like this electric bus. So the city of the future will be a lot quieter with electric cars and buses. In fact, all types of vehicles will be greener, like this food takeout van. We'll also have special cycleways and footpaths to make it all easier and safer. So your city of the future will be a lot quieter with electric cars and buses, different road layouts with cycleways and footpaths. But what other aspects of our everyday lives have a climate impact? Well, have you ever thought about your heating system? If you live in Scotland, you will need to have a heating system. It does get pretty chilly here. But what type of heating do you have at home? The chances are you probably have a gas boiler and it probably looks like this. And it probably lives in a cupboard. Or you maybe have an oil fired heating system, which would mean that you have one of these. This is an oil tank which stores oil to burn to generate heat. Well, you might even have a coal fire for your heating, which burns this. In the homes of the future, your heating will need to be zero carbon. Let's think back and remember what this means. It means not burning fossil fuels like coal and oil and gas. So what does that mean that your future home heating will look like? Well, first we'll need to reduce the amount of heat that our homes need. How do we do this? We have to make sure all of our homes are energy efficient. We need warm homes to be healthy and we can improve how warm our homes are by making sure that all the heat that we put into them doesn't escape through the roof or the windows or the walls. This is a picture of a thermal image of a home showing all of the heat loss from the house. The heat loss is shown as orange and yellow. The homes of the future will have lots of insulation and high-tech windows that keep the heat in. This is what we mean by insulation, thick padding added to walls and ceilings to keep all of the heat inside the building. Don't worry, this is what it looks like inside the walls and the ceiling, it's not the finished look. So what type of heating systems can we use that don't have greenhouse gas emissions? We're really lucky because we already have the heating technology to solve this problem. And it uses a source of energy that we have all around us. Can you guess what that might be? Well done if you guess the sun. As you all know, the sun heats things up, like the ground and the air. We can use technology to take this heat and use it to heat our homes. This is a picture of a heat pump. In your home of the future, you might have one of these. Heat pumps basically work like a fridge in reverse. Your fridge in your kitchen pumps the heat out to reduce the air temperature inside the fridge. A heat pump transfers heat from outside your house to inside. The amazing thing about heat pumps is that they can extract heat even when it's really cold. This is a picture of a heat pump working in really cold weather. There are two main types of heat pump. There are air source heat pumps, which look like this, and they take heat from the air outside. And there are ground source heat pumps, which look like this, and they take heat from the ground. Both air source and ground source heat pumps are powered using electricity. Now, obviously we need that electricity to be sourced from renewable sources like wind power, but because they are using a natural source of heat, from the air or the ground, they are a really efficient way to heat our homes. It only takes a small amount of electricity to run the pump that then extracts all of the heat that we need from outside. Heat pumps can feed heat into your radiators or into underfloor heating. So to replace your gas boiler with a heat pump, we just need to switch the machinery around. We just need to change the box from this to this. The second type of heating system that might be heating your home of the future is a heat network. This is how a heat network works. In this picture, you'll see that there's an energy center in the middle, distributing heat to all of the connected buildings. So a heat network is really like a big shared central heating system. It has a central source of renewable heat that is then piped around the houses on the network. 
heat networks use sources of renewable heat that are not always possible for individual buildings to use, like heat from a river or waste heat from a shopping centre or a local hospital. This heat is then used to heat the water which is sent through the pipework to the connected buildings. It's a really simple system and it uses proven technology. This is a picture of Copenhagen in Denmark, where 98% of homes are heated using a heat network. This type of heating is really popular in lots of other countries, but unfortunately at the moment, only 1% of Scotland's homes are currently heated using a heat network. So we have a long way to go. We do have some heat networks operating in Scotland already. There's a new one in Stirling, which takes heat from wastewater in a treatment plant. Yep, that's all the heat from all of the toilets emptying into the sewage treatment facility. This is the first one of its kind in the UK, and it's predicted to save 381 tonnes of carbon each year. That's a lot of carbon. I'm looking forward to answering your questions, but I'm going to guess one question you might have. With both transport and heat, we have talked about using electricity rather than fossil fuels. Some of you might be thinking, that electricity is still bad for the environment. Well, we are really lucky in Scotland because nearly all of our electricity is generated from renewable sources like wind power, hydroelectricity, and even solar power. The trick with using renewable energy effectively is to make sure we reduce what we use, we make the most efficient use of it, and we are really clever about when we use it. So like in this photo, the cities of the future, our homes and our cars will need to use electricity when there's lots of renewable energy available like solar and wind. To help us do this, all your homes of the future will have smart electricity meters and they will tell you the best time to run your washing machine, charge your electric car. You might even have a battery in a cupboard like in this next picture. The battery will store energy that your solar panels have made, and you'll then be able to use this ele renewable electricity at nighttime, even when there's no wind blowing to power the turbines. How we manage our energy use in the future is going to require lots of clever technology, and you'll probably be able to control your heating and even charge your car using your mobile phone. I know that all of this is really complicated stuff, but hopefully you feel excited about the future and understand how your lives will have a much gentler impact on the planet. Let's remember why it's important. At WWF, we believe there are two emergencies, climate and nature. So just imagine, whilst you are commuting to work in the future, let's hope that you are traveling past fields full of wildflowers, buzzing with bees and butterflies, that there are hedgerows full of nesting birds. Because we will have reduced the use of petrol and diesel, the air will be cleaner and you'll breathe deeply the pollution-free air. You'll turn the key in the front door of your future home and it will be a warm, cozy place that greets you with insulated walls to keep all that precious heat inside. It might sound like a dream, but for you guys, it will be your city of the future. Where you live and how you live will meet the needs of humanity, address climate change and reverse the loss of nature. I'm happy to take your questions and looking forward to hearing what you think your city of the future will be like for you and your friends.